Hey everybody, Beyond Drew TV here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another episode of Zoo Design. Today we're going to go ahead and do an episode where we look at a real life zoo and see what we can uh, take inspiration from for our future planet zoo builds there. And uh, we uh, this episode is coming pretty much brought to you by the community. Uh, if you didn't see in the new community tab that we have, I went ahead and put up a poll with uh, this zoo, uh, the Chester Zoo, and the London Zoo. And those were uh, picked because uh, in the Brookfield Zoo, the first episode of this, basically those were the top three zoos that people were recommending uh, the most there. So I put those in a poll, about 100 of you voted. So thank you so much to those that um, put your opinion up there and voted for the zoos. And uh, yeah, the San Diego Zoo won pretty uh, pretty handily, pretty hands down there with um, just over 50% of the vote. I think it was 51 or 52% by the end of it. Um, so yeah, it seems like a lot of you were um, thinking the same way I was because I was already kind of looking into this zoo. Now I personally have never been to this zoo pretty much here on out except for if we look at the Madison Zoo the Milwaukee Zoo or I think that's it because any other zoos I've been to have been like really rinky-dink zoos um, I have not been to them so this is gonna be a new experience for me as it is for you as well so I'm bound to miss some things I'm just gonna throw that out there I'm, I'm sure I'm bound to miss some things I've been doing research um, for the past uh, few nights here when I get um, a few hours there kind of looking at YouTube videos of walkthroughs and uh, you know the top 10 things you should do with the San Diego Zoo you know and just all those fun things but again just remember that this isn't like a zoo review right we're um, again we're looking at things that we can kind of apply from uh, the real design of zoos, whether that's layouts, habitat design, max stages, um, you name it, everything like that, um, and apply it to our Planet Zoo build. So, um, but yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and back out here. I know we're just kind of looking at this, but look at our little flamingo area here. This is the entrance plaza to the zoo. Um, for those of you that have not seen it, this is the, uh, yeah, just the little entrance plaza. And I'm going to go ahead and actually we're going to back out real quick because we're going to talk about something that's different between the Brookfield Zoo and this zoo already. Let me go ahead and first do a one of these, you know, sound effects necessary. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, here's the uh, here's the entire zoo. A little bit, for me at least, it was, it was a little bit confusing there to figure out like, okay, where, we, you know, obviously since I backed out from here, you can see it now. But when I first came here, I was like, is it over, is it over, is it, the, is it, okay, parking lot, is it here? No, it's, so, you know, for, as, again, for someone like me who's never been to this zoo, and I'm finding that with a few other zoos that I'm looking into, um, you know, it's kind of fun to kind of get your bearings real quick. And, um, but yeah, here's the, uh, uh, here's the entrance plaza area to the zoo here and something to notice that again is different right off the bat well the Brookfield Zoo is a little bit of a unique entrance and you know this has a more traditional ooh busy day uh, traditional uh, parking lot here um, but something to notice is um, this has an entrance building right so the Brookfield Zoo um, after you walked in underneath the little tunnel area you walked in it was just like a ticket uh, turnstile area this one's pretty neat and uh, it's a little bit hard to get um, really good pictures because unfortunately and you'll find this if you use Google Maps a lot um, there's not always one of these lines remember these lines I can drop down and I can walk around on these lines clicking the mouse around out front here is that's not an option there's a few picture spots but they're not the I'll drop our guy down there uh, they're not the best um, they you know it was like the morning time I think here and they uh, the Sun is kind of in the way so you get a little bit of an idea of the entrance plaza for sure but again it's not the best picture so I do have this brought up here there we go so that, that's a little bit better of a, uh, a shot there we can kind of see through here um, again it's it's a building entrance and I think that's really interesting and uh, not the first time that I've seen this while doing some research for zoos uh, to have again you can kind of look in here and um, I'm just spitballing because I, I didn't look up any pictures or haven't looked inside here but you know there could be exhibits inside here there's probably a gift shop I'm betting uh, maybe some customer service guest services and stuff like that so if you look at this building there we go from the area the aerial the air <laughs> from uh, up above it's it's a pretty sizable building and it looks okay it looks over here it goes to a sandwich company here uh, so an eatery there's children's clothing store on the other side and you know that's something to touch on um, as well there uh, this is uh, again something you see in theme parks a lot but you have your uh, multiple facades being used here so you have your front here with all of your ticket booths and the uh, entrance you can kind of see the entrance structure a little bit there but then when you flip it and you go through it on this side here, it's being used as well, right? So if we come back down in here, which, and this is definitely something you can use when designing your zoos, um, the multi-use building. You come over here and now we have a um, strollers and wheelchairs. And then we had what the children's shop over here and the exit is over here as well. 
Um, and as we back out here, um, the one of the big things I wanted to touch before we kind of get into the nitty gritty of this zoo look over is gonna be um, touching on terrain. If you're looking to build a terrain style zoo, and actually I never really thought of it up until looking at this zoo, actually mainly this zoo, but this is gonna be your uh, zoo for inspiration. If you're going for a realistic terrain type zoo, um, I can't believe what they've had to do to, to make this work, because I don't know if you can tell right here, but first there's these really neat netting structures. I think this is an aviary or um, like a butterfly house or something like that, but we'll look at that in just a, um, just a minute it there but if you look down here and go like this you can see that it's it's like a valley right through here and it's kind of hard to tell I know through here and um, but you can kind of see right here a little bit more here's the uh, road here and then it kind of cliff faced down so there's huge elevation changes and um, that's that's really really good to look at for um, if you're designing again a kind of a realistic terrain um, zoo and what the challenges that present itself um, in that again we talked talked about this in our underwater um, habitat viewing concept the concept art underwater viewing habitat there it is uh, video where we talked about having everyone access to the zoo right so if you have massive terrain um, differences like this um, you can't just throw in stairs you also have to think of you know other guests with like wheelchair needs and stuff like that so we'll look at how this zoo kind of tackles that and um, in different kind of ways there so yeah let's go ahead and um, jump over to um, one of the first areas that I wanted to look at okay First thing I wanted to uh, point out is that we're actually pretty close to the entrance there. Right back there, we've only gone a few clicks uh, this back way here. And the first thing I want you to notice is that we've only seen technically one animal so far. And that was a theme that we saw with the Brookfield Zoo as well. Uh, we've only seen flamingos so far and we just got a quick glimpse of it. But other than that, since we've been in the zoo, and, and again, we're kind of near the beginning, but uh, you only really see here, here's a gift shop, nice picnic area right up here. So, you know, there's a little, um, what's this? some Zufari photos there you go and speaking of that I know I haven't pointed out the obvious yet but you know the other thing that catches your eye is this Zufari or I'm pretty sure this is a Zufari right here but this uh, chairlift going back and forth through here but you know just again just to point out that you know none of those are animals right so just kind of reinforcing that idea that you don't need to uh, just kind of cram everything right in, at the front of your zoo you can again let it kind of breathe put some gift shops some shops uh, some uh, restaurants maybe some seating areas you know just some general planters and stuff uh, you can finally see this is the first animal that we've seen um, and we're still at the beginning of the zoo and it's not even an actual animal it's just uh, an entrance to a reptile house so you have these little uh, these little shacks on the side of the road here you know just little things right and and again theme parks are really good to look at for this kind of stuff too here's your uh, ATM and stuff like that um, but you know there's just always little things here and there little shacks little places to buy something buy me buy 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 spend your money please come spend your money so and then there's the um, entrance way to your sky fari there it goes right over top of you I don't it hasn't been confirmed I don't believe that we're getting any uh, chair left or anything like that. So I don't think that, uh, you know, since I'm pointing that out, that it's been confirmed. However, for the longest time, we didn't have uh, chair lifts or, or anything like that in a uh, planet coaster. So finally the community said, heck it, I'm building it ourselves. And someone built a modular system of it and then planet, then frontier saw that I think, and they're like, Oh, well, here you go. And then they gave it to us like in the next DLC pack. But anyways, so yeah, someone might actually build that for us. So, and another thing to uh, notice is the vegetation. Notice how that there's always curbs and everything around uh, kind of making uh, these little tea areas. I think John T is the one that always talks about the, the natural tea sections that you get. That's a real life thing as well. And a great way to just kind of make it look nice and everything is, you know, you have these little curbs right here and uh, you could do this in a uh, planet zoo. No problem. You know, take a little, um, you, you, you name it, take a column, take something, turn it on its side and just duplicate it all around. And you have these nice little uh, natural planters and stuff. And right here, you just have little terracotta plants and stuff like that. I can't remember if we have those in planet zoo or not but i know we got it in planet coaster in the uh, theme makers toolkit so uh that something to note about the san diego zoo is that the natural climate uh, kind of enables it to be a uh, botanical garden throughout so you do see a good number of uh, vegetation and plants and a lot of unique plants too i was kind of reading up that oh hey look it's a komodo dragon i was kind of reading up that uh uh, the zoo is um, housed to, again, thousands and thousands of uh, different species of plants, and some of them are more rare and unique than the uh, animals in the zoo. So oh, here here we are at the main thing I wanted to point out that we are leading to. Uh, this is the Wedge Fork, I believe it's uh, called, the Wedge Fork Bowl. 
and uh, this is an amphitheater and I know it's kind of hard to tell right here but this gives you a good idea if you wanted to build one a good way to do it um, see how we're kind of ground level and if you've been to like a baseball game you know baseball diamond or anything like that um, this is kind of the same idea there so I'll kind of back up you see how it goes ground level and you can uh, sit up here if we back out we can kind of see how it goes down into a bowl right <clears throat> so that's uh, kind of shows you a good way to build one of those and that goes to a animal enrichment um, stage show there so um, that would be kind of something that a lot of people would want to build. So that is something I definitely wanted to show off there. So um, there is that. And then, uh, oh yeah, reinforcing. If we go past this, I really, really liked this. It gives me some good ideas if I want to build a zoo that's not limited to um, the kind of foliage that we can put in there. Uh, look at this. How amazing is this? There's like an entire, I guess you'd say, just a desert biome with a bunch of d different desert foliage and everything. And the amount of foliage that we have in the game already, I mean, you could already make something similar to, if not exact, this. And, you know, same with the uh, like the trees up top here. If only we could recolor trees in, in the game, right? That would just make everything perfect. <laughs> um, and then on the right side here, I, I don't know if you could walk in here or not but i do know into this building it's a reptile walkthrough or a reptile trail or something like that but i do know at the end of it they have some habitats and over on the left side there's some um, there's some things and stuff like that so um but yeah mainly i just wanted to show uh how you know again curbing you know if you have these giant holes in the middle of your pathways um just think of what you would want to do with it and, and usually for like zoos if you're trying to go for that foliage or that natural look don't be afraid to just curb it up you know use whatever material is in that theme so this is kind of a desert theme so it looks like we're kind of going for that stucco you know white um, white and reds right kind of that hispanic kind of um, theme and feel and um you know just tick on your you know so if you want desert tick on desert tick on north american and place those kind of uh, plants and stuff like that and uh, you'll get some really really nice results so okay here we are back out in the main entrance way again uh this you know we took a left over here towards the reptile house but uh, i wanted to come back over here and highlight this bus tour tickets and also highlight pathing and roadways in this zoo and this is another thing uh that you'll see is a a little bit some zoos do it some zoos don't the brookfield zoo chose not to and i should what i'm talking about is backstage roads <laughs> the brookfield zoo kind of chose to hide theirs in a way but they also made their main pathways big enough to have actual cars and like backstage trucks and stuff like that tra uh, travel down them but the main ones they kind of hid back and in, in uh, back away uh, for this zoo and other zoos some of them just kind of have them out in the open um, and don't really hide them and just kind of more so incorporate them uh, into the actual design and you can kind of see this and I wanted to touch on the bus tour because the bus there's a, a bus that travels around the uh, I think it's mainly the perimeter of the zoo it can't really get into these nitty-gritty areas but you can see this road right here if you follow my mouse right down here uh, follow this road and it kind of goes around the perimeter a little bit and hooks back up with some of these bigger roads and stuff like that um, I think the bus travels around that area and travel and drops people off and gives little tours but kind of a cool thing how they incorporated this backstage roads it's like a back backstage slash pathway road but they wanted to keep guests clear and if you take your little deuterino you can see that from the entrance way it comes up over this way and we kind of divert away from this road and go down this front street they call it and what's really neat here is that it is literally just a carved out path like just an asphalt pathway that you just kind of hike down just to get guests out of the way if they need to uh, I, i'm pretty sure just to have a truck or a, a vehicle pass by really really quickly right here you can see the roadway right there and see how the bus is right there and uh, there's another vehicle so this is literally just a get out of the way guest path but something they do that's really neat i really hope we get small like birds or um, just other really tiny animals i know these look exactly like exhibit i guess you'd use the small exhibits um, but diff just a different variation and uh, that's what's in these cages and these are very very tiny cages but they're open air and they have some uh, natural trees and stuff like that in them and you see this a lot where um you just have tiny small animals you know just tiny exhibits they don't have to have a huge habitat that's you know all carved out and everything you can literally like you could go to pet insert the name or you know you know you could buy this yourself for your home and but you know they just still have it out here because um it's not always just about those again ginormous animals it's sometimes about these small habitats these smaller attractions right that really kind of fill out a zoo as you're uh, um, going through it and i just again i think it's really neat that they have this side path here off this main road and you know they could have left it barren but you know they were chose to kind of put some of these um you know some people would consider them i guess smaller you know um, attractive animals uh, some people would be like nope that's my favorite animal and stuff like that the uh the red something 
bird. Uh, but you know, again, they just something else to fill out your zoos. That's not just a huge um, habitat or big a uh, big thing there. So okay, so this is just outside the front street where we just were. Those that little pathway, um, and I just wanted to show off a few things. Uh, first, how they deal with um, elevation change. So if you look right over this way, as we were mentioning before, this park has uh, or this zoo has a lot of different elevation changes, and some of them very drastic. Um, and they have to kind of uh, incorporate, you know, just uh, vehicles. Not only that, but um, you know, a lot of uh, different people with different needs and stuff like that. So when you're designing zoos that have big drastic changes like that, uh, do make sure that um, you can have sections that have stairways and stuff like that, but uh, if you're trying to go on that realistic side, do make sure you have like kind of sloped, you know, gently kind of sloped. Oh, we went through the bus! Uh, <laughs> uh, gently sloped uh, areas like this so that uh, everyone can kind of uh, access it there. But yeah, this kind of goes all the way down. And even on your way down there, you get to see some, uh, some animals. Is that a tiger? Is that a tiger den? Oh my gosh. Isn't that kind of funny? You would think, and maybe it leads out to another section because you see that in zoos a lot where uh, you would think that the tigers would have this ginormous habitat kind of thing um, but it's just this little area and again maybe it pops out where this cave system kind of pops out behind it into a, the actual big one but just kind of interesting or it could just be a, a smaller holding cell too i've seen the zoo san diego actually <laughs> um that they've uh put animals in certain uh exhibits or certain habitats for just like a, a little bit when they're in just like a holding area and stuff like that so um but yeah even though this is still just like a long long pathway a long roadway you can see how there's just little habitats sprinkled um kind of throughout here and there some of them have animals some of them don't and you can see the uh the trenchway right the trenches are a big thing we saw that in brookfield zoo um, where that was uh, kind of made first uh, popular um, or no, I'm sorry. I think it was Chester Zoo that was first making it popular. Bears. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, the idea again of of the uh, the trenches there, and um, you know, being able to see the animals just kind of hanging out in somewhat of a natural habitat. Again, a little bit smaller than they're going to be smaller because I think you know back here this is going to lead into their uh, more backstage, more uh, bigger hangout areas, and it's a little bit harder to see, but. As we look up, yep, and you can see right there, leads into their actual sleeping area and their hangout habitat. But that's kind of a great view right there to see all these different habitats. And you can see the same thing from uh, the Brookfield Zoo to this zoo. So these habitats were probably built around the same time, perhaps. Uh, but you can see how they just, again, use that same sort of design uh, going through here. You know, square habitat, square habitat, square habitat. You name one, two, wait, how many? One, two, three, four, five. There's five habitats right here, all with their own backstages right through there. And it looks like, you know, this is the center street that we were walking down, that gentle uh, slope down. Let's see if we can't walk up in here. We can. What is this? Okay, so these are little habitats again. So uh, here's another great example of, you know, the small habitats, uh, similar to the ones um, up top there. But uh, these just have, I can't see, what's in here? Do you see anything? I don't see anything. It just kind of leads back there and uh, kind of leads to your backstage access right there as well. So there you go. That's a great look at um, kind of how they realistically, you know, again, do uh, multiple habitats along a uh, little road right there. And I think that's more right there. So there's five and six. Oh, oh we can see. Yep, there's even more. So what is that? Six, like six or seven or whatever habitats. Just bam, 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 all, all down the road. Well, there's a great example again of a uh, uh, shade too. You see this like uh, this shade pulled over top of it there. So uh, you don't you don't always have to use trees uh, if you can't fit a tree in there. It looks like a lot of these don't have trees um, in the middle of them or anything like that. You can literally just pull a shade cover over top of it as if it was, you know, like a person or something like that. So cool. That was a really good look. Let's move on to the uh, next thing. Okay, so here is the next thing I want to touch on just real quick. It's the, uh, the Parker Aviary, I think it's called. Yeah, Parker Aviary. Um, it's really, really cool looking, and um, you could technically build it if you wanted to and take the time, but uh, we're not going to really touch on it too much just because as of recording this, there's no confirmed like fly-around birds. I mean, you could fill it with like peacocks and peafowls, but uh, I, I don't know. You could, uh, yeah, as of recording this, we just don't have the birds for it, um, so you know, I'm not going to touch on it too much, but here's a kind of up-close picture. Um, you can't get a really good picture of it in the Google Maps, unfortunately. So here's kind of what it looks like there. But yeah, again, just want to touch on it real quick, but uh, not too much there. So there is that. 
Ooh, okay. So this is a little bit of, I guess, Google Maps advice or trickery sometimes. Uh, watch your dates. What I mean there is in this upper left-hand corner, it says May 2018, right? Um, when you're, I'm looking at this overhead right here, it's definitely not May of 2018. I think it's 2009, actually, because you uh, there's supposed to be a bridge right over here. It's really, really cool looking, actually. I'm glad I accidentally kind of stumbled upon it right there. I think I've seen pictures of it before, too. Um, but yeah, this is May of 2018, and that's obviously a, a much newer bridge that kind of just goes right over top of, or and connects over to the um, over here. And uh, again, that's just kind of touching on uh, terrain and stuff like that that you have to kind of deal with, right? So um, you can see this this really cool modern kind of bridge connecting over there, and I'm sure that saves people tons of time rather than having to go up the hill wherever that is. So you have that, and then if you look over here, if you're trying to build something similar to this, there's actually stairs that kind of come down right here as well to the ground level. So uh, yeah, just a really glad I uh, kind of found that there and that's a really cool bridge to kind of take inspiration from if you're building a um, like a, a ravine park or you know yeah parks with ravines and stuff like this so the next area of the zoo I wanted to show off is called elephant odyssey and I, I think we can apply a lot of things as we walk through this for our zoo designs and uh, actually big time habitat designs. So it's called Elephant Odyssey, which makes you think, oh, cool, we're going to go in and see an elephant. And you'd be right ish. It has that, but they also have, as we walk in, you know, you even have this really nice, you could almost see this um, in uh, Planet Zoo, couldn't you, in the modern African set. Um, you kind of, your first animal that you see is actually some condors or vultures right there. And they even have a big old vulture thing right there. So. I kind of tried to do this in my Thornton Zoo build a little bit, but um, it's the idea that, you know, even though it's called Elephant Odyssey, that doesn't mean that it's just elephants in there. It's kind of building up that world that the elephants are a part of. So these are African elephants, and they probably have to deal with, you know, the harsh realities or harsh environment of a condor or vulture encircling them all the time or something. Or, again, it's just a another animal in its habitat. So it's just kind of setting up that world, teaching you more um, than just, you know, the elephant there. I uh, got stuck in this area last time. Um, but, yeah, so they, I like that a lot. We're going to keep following this trail all the way through because you get these really nice um, glass panel views um, of just, you know, some condors, some birds. Really, really cool there. Then you come around and you have this nice habitat on the end of it. And again, very, very tiny habitat, tiny exhibit. Um, we have this kind of in Planet Zoo, right? The square, but we, I don't know how you pull something like this off. You probably just have to fake it. Um, Cause whatever's in there, I'm sure it's like a tiny gecko or something. But um, what's really neat about it is if uh, you look here, here's the outside version here. This inside here, this square, you can look inside here, there's little portholes and you can look inside um, and see whatever's going there. So maybe it's a lizard of some sort or some small creature, but you know, just another cool small habitat. Design. The small habitats, I think, are some of the really neat, um, the more cool looking uh, um, designs there. So another thing to look at, um, I kind of skipped over the front one, but on the left hand side and on your right hand side, there's little play places. They're not ginormous. Uh, you know, full blown out uh, play areas, but they're just little play areas for kids. And they usually, again, tie into the overall theme of um, some conservation or uh, just environmentalism and uh, we're teaching you about the elephants and stuff. They kind of all uh, go back to that there. And again, mind you, we haven't even seen the elephants yet. I skipped over one habitat, one exhibit back there because there's nothing in it, but there was another exhibit back there that I'm sure they have an animal in. Um, and right here, again, still not, still no elephants, and this is not an elephant habitat or exhibit. Uh, there's nothing in here right now, but um, again, it's just all setting the setting the stage, setting the world there. And until finally, it's kind of like you have a little reveal coming around the corner. Boom, there you go. There's your elephants right there with their, um, I think these are just shades, the shade covers. I built this in Green Hill Zoo because it's amazing looking you're gonna see a, a lot more views of that uh, but you come around the corner this is like you can tell this is a main area right you've been walking along this trail forever and look at you have your elephants and then you have uh, your gift shop to the left your kind of modern looking uh, gift shop uh, really cool uh, right there I hope we get some theme maker uh, toolkit items or uh, some other interior items to make for gift shops or um, art shapes to make these out of because uh, yeah those little items like that really make an area don't they so, but yeah, you can follow this trail and now we have the uh, elephant enclosure. And I just want you to notice, like as we're clicking through here, how big this area is. Cause this is, um, this is top of the line from, from what I know, I'm sure there's probably better ones uh, now. Um, let me know, know down below, but um, to my knowledge, the San Diego zoos uh, elephant program and elephant habitats are 
close to, if not the best in the world kind of thing. So, um, but I'll show you how big it is when we um, back out. But it's ginormous. It just keeps on going and going and going and going. Um, but all the while, um, you can see up here, I kind of skipped over it a little bit. Um, but that uh, gift shop connects up to a restaurant up there, and then you have a nice little seating area. So, kind of playing with terrain levels as well. You can see how the gift sh or the patio set is just above right here, and we're going a little bit down. So, still playing with terrain, and terrain up here is going up. So, just a lot of different elevations. A lot of elevations make for really cool sight lines and designs and stuff like that. So always kind of play with your uh, your terrain heights. So, um, but it's kind of neat because again, you, you lose your visual over here, but as you come over here, you get a different visual, a different sight line of some elephants over that way, um, and it transitions through this way. As we come around the corner, you start to um, you can still see. Uh, this whole time that the habitat walls they uh, they're made of these fences here but they're also made of the um, ground as well you can see here I think this is actually just concrete and then kind of sculpted so that's um, artisan right there you see that in the theme parks a lot but yeah coming around here and they also use the rocks as um, walls as well so that's would be using null fencing and stuff And the biggest thing I wanted to take away from this is just look at this structure to house the elephants there. Um, it's very wide open and just kind of showing the rest of it, the uh, area here, how big it is. But um, it's so wide open um, and I think it's really amazing how they, uh, they have a zookeeper out here um, every once in a while. Yeah, there they are over there answering any questions. You can just see the uh, elephants um, in their their little uh, shed area. It's not even a shed, just uh, I don't even know what to call it, but it all connects up to this huge elephant um, sanctuary there. <laughs> so the care center, there you go. Conrad Preby's Elephant Care Center. Um, a very impressive and uh, definitely looks like a more modern take. I mean, it's 2009, so at least 10 years ago, but you know, more modern take on the uh, elephant enclosure there. So I'd say if you're looking to build a elephant enclosure in uh, Planet Zoo, but definitely look up the San Diego zoos because it looks very impressive uh, from, from my dumb self. So... Okay, and then like I said, here is a um, top-down version version uh, view of the Elephant Odyssey, and I'm gonna bring it back here because this is where we started. This is—it's hard to tell, I know, but this is where that sculpture and stuff was that led into the vulture area. So you can see really how far it took, you know, to get into there. This whole first half right here is all not even elephants. Um, this is your vulture, and then the other um, habitats there, and the play areas and stuff like that. And then right there where this wall is, kind of, well, it kind of opens up, but um, that's where you your elephant odyssey or your elephants actually are and look at how much bigger it is in comparison to this little thing to whoosh, there so <laughs> you really have to give your elephants some room if you want to give them the proper care and uh, they're they're a really unique animal to take care of from what I've read and what I've watched and seen and everything like that so if you're trying to do their habitats correctly and give them uh, enough uh, welfare and stuff like that definitely uh, look into you know different zoos that have done a more modern approach and uh, yeah here's just an idea again of how big you're gonna have to make it right so there you go impressive most impressive all right so from african elephants we're gonna go ahead and make our way down to an arctic polar bear there but on our way down i just wanted to look onto the left hand side here as we're going down this road to kind of uh, just again reinforce the idea of these uh small square trench habitats and uh, you see these just so much, at least in American zoos. Perhaps when we start looking at our more UK and uh, European zoos, perhaps they'll be um, a little bit different. But as far as the American zoos go, um, up there you had like warthogs, and then I think these are just a form of antelope. I'm not sure what kind. Um, then there's another one right here, you know, another um, small hooved animal of some sort. But yeah, just again, just. You know, with their space, it looks like on the side of a road, it, they'll either throw in that small exhibit, that small habitat, or um, this actual little pen almost there. Um, and then over here is gonna be our main exhibit, and uh, you can kind of see it a little bit, and that's kind of neat how you get a little glimpse in. You, they definitely purposely did that because on the right hand side, as we were walking down, they uh, shielded this uh, the back side here, the probably the backstage building, and wanted you to look left into the little pens, right? And then they purposely open it up to say, hey, look at where you're going. Um, but yeah, you can see some of the uh, it's not, it's interesting how they do a combination of uh, you have some of the rock uh, work done here and uh, some some places they're just like nope building <laughs> so um, but you come over here and I just really like how this uh, polar bear habitat looks and I'm pretty sure polar bears have been um, uh, confirmed pretty sure if not they need to be so uh, but yeah I just really like that come back I want to go this way um, I really like how this habitat looks that's just uh, that's the whole that's the whole reason that we're going to it I just really like how it looks so <laughs> 
There we go. Um, but yeah, as you come in here, you can see, uh, and th you see this a lot, a lot, a lot in the habitats, but the upper lower kind of thing where there's a uh, an upper um, deck that you can kind of um, walk up to and then look over and then a lower one as well. So you can get a lot of people in here, but the really good underwater viewing here um, of the, uh, there he is, polar bear swimming around and they get a, a full uh, North American view. And you can kind of, uh, you know, like a North American immersion, I should say, uh, like backwoods. And um, you can kind of see how they uh, envelop. You can see, because you, you know where the pathway is now. It's right behind it there. And you can see how the uh, how it's enveloped in uh, the trees here. And then the front of it has your uh, has your water. So you can kind of see this from a top-down view. It's a little bit easier to explain. There we are. There you go. So it kind of uh, blocks the view naturally, right? Um, so that's a really good uh, good representation of a habitat there. And you can see where the people are, are standing right there. So really cool. Love that habitat. Love that exhibit. All right, so rolling with the common theme of dealing with terrain in uh, your zoos, this is a fantastic way to uh, deal with that, I guess. Uh, you have uh, just straight up escalators going throughout the park, and I've, I've noticed at least uh, two or three of them throughout the uh, throughout the area there. So you have this one kind of going up to the aviary. I know it's going to be hard to tell, but the aviary is just up that way. But they have literal escalators. There's one going up, bing bing so it's a two connector and then there's another one there you can kind of see the visuals of it a little bit when they bring the dude out it goes up up <laughs> and then there's another one that goes uh you can actually see this one right here um see it goes up like this and then up like that up to the elephant area so um, you have those and i think those are the escalators are the ones that are flat like the moving walkways at airports so I believe that you can put like strollers and um, wheelchairs and stuff like that on it. And if not, there is, you know, the option to uh, have to walk um, all the way up and around. So there's always a way to get there. It's just the escalators, if they are just regular escalators, uh, make it just that much easier um, if you can access it. But if not, you know, there's always the option for those people to still get to where they need to go. They just have to kind of walk around there. So there is that. Let's see what else we can see. All right, and I think one of the last things I wanted to look at in this zoo, there is so much to look at. We could spend hours going through this place. Um, definitely check it out on Google Maps and different YouTube videos and stuff like that. Do some independent research if anything sparked your interest because there is a lot to go through here. One of the last things I wanted to uh, mention and look at is this, uh, what is it called? The Sun Bear Forest Trail, I think. Uh, and I'm familiar with trails and the idea that from Animal Kingdom. In Animal Kingdom, they have uh, a trail in like uh, Asia and I think they even have one in, for all their continents that they have basically. Um, but it's the idea that, you know, you're just walking through a trail and there's definitely different exhibits um, off of it. So um, if you go down this one, I'll try my best to go through it. It's a kind of a tight little thing to walk through and sometimes it doesn't always uh, cooperate. Um, but yeah, as you're walking through, it's kind of themed to, uh, yeah, they all have different themes usually. So this is what it's the Sun Bear Trail. So it's uh, the main attraction of it will be, I think like a, an Asian black bear or something. But um, again, it's a straight up trail and uh, there's just habitats and exhibits to the side of it and I'm definitely going to build um, a number of these um, in the zoos that I'm going to have and again you just kind of um, I'm, I'm really familiar with them from Animal Kingdom especially not sure if there's other zoos that um, do this I was kind of surprised um, to see um, one of these in this zoo but maybe it's more common than I'm uh, than I know about again I haven't I wish I uh, have been to more but I'm gonna try to go to more uh, but I haven't been to too too many zoos but um, these are really impressive how again you're just walking through a trail and um, you know there's probably birds up in here so there's some ideas for a different kind of aviary there there you go again it's kind of hard to get walking through here because it's a very tight trail it's a it's a zigzaggy up and down because it has huge elevation changes as it goes through um, really hard to see though because it's so lush with foliage um, you can see vines growing all over the place and stuff but um, oh it's for monkeys i can see there it's for monkeys um, but yeah, no, I just think, uh, again, it's something, a cool idea to kind of take off of it, especially for a lot of us who are going to be doing the, um, the like North American themes and, uh, you know, just different countries and themes and stuff like that. Here's a look at kind of how it zigzags back up and it goes way up like that. It meets back up with Center Street. And if you remember, Center Street starts really, really tall up here and kind of goes down, meanders down slowly but surely. Um, so it goes, you know, starts down here at the bottom of the valley or whatever, and then goes zigzags the way back up, or you can go this way and zig your way back down. So um, that just kind of shows that off there. But um, yeah, no, that's pretty well 
the uh, zoo there. Again, there's a lot to take in. Google Maps is a little bit behind with its aerial stuff there and some of its ground stuff. They need to send someone in to get some uh, new new uh, overheads and all that fun stuff. Like all this is under construction. I'm sure it's all done since this was back in 2009. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a lot to take away. Again, look up this zoo on your own because there's so much to uh, take away. Take uh, and make sure you pin it for full release there because I know I will. I could be coming back here and taking a, a bunch of ideas from Google Maps from uh, the San Diego Zoo. So, um, but yeah, the next zoo, I think we're going to take a look at the Chester Zoo. It was next up in our poll there. Let me know what kind of, uh, what, what zoo we should go look at. Whatever one gets the most upvotes, we might do it before the Chester Zoo, might do it after, but we'll do it overall. It's all good. So, cool. All right. Hey, this has been a lot of fun. I really enjoy these videos. Or, uh, it's great to look at a bunch of zoos that I'm not familiar with and take a bunch of ideas. So, until the next one, y'all have a good one. Thanks. Bye. Bye.